Hi, my name is Hector Garcia, and I want to show you a little trick about how to do advanced reports using QuickBooks data. In this example, we're going to be using QuickBooks Online on a Mac and Excel on a Mac. Very similar on a PC, but we'll show it on a Mac for this example. The first thing we want to do is we want to extract the data, the accounting data, from QuickBooks Online. So I got my QuickBooks Online file open right here. I'm going to go to reports. Then I'm going to go down to where it says all reports. And I'm going to look for the option called accountant reports. Right here, accountant reports. So I'll click on accountant reports. And then I'm going to go down and click on general ledger because that contains pretty much everything. So we'll open the general ledger. On transaction date, we'll choose all. We're going to extract, export all of this information. We're going to hit run report here, give you an idea what type of information we're going to get. That's our entire general ledger. I'm going to go into customize and I'm going to add a column here with every single piece of data that's available. So I'm going to grab all these columns here, A, R, A, P. I'm going to grab all these columns. So I'll grab them all here and then I'm going to click on add and just puts them here on the right side. So now they'll they'll be included. So I hit OK and then run report. We'll give it a couple seconds for it to load. So now I have my entire accounting database in a single report. I'm going to export this to Excel. I'll click on Excel. There we go. So we're going to open the Excel file and I'm going to make this font a little bit bigger to make this easier to read. So I'm going to zoom out 200% and then I'll even out some of these columns here. There you go. So this is the data that's coming from QuickBooks, right? all the raw data, amounts, transaction dates, name of the customer, everything. I'm going to clean this out because I can't have any columns past here or no rows past here so everything to the left of that I'm gonna get rid of and everything on top of this I'm gonna get rid of so I'm gonna select the entire column A and right click on this and delete I'm gonna select rows 1 to 3 here actually run 1 through 4 I'm gonna right click here and delete there we go that gets rid of that excess data this this empty row here I'm gonna get rid of also the data has to be very clean has to be square now, one of the issues we're going to have with exporting data from QuickBooks is the subtotal. So I'm going to scroll down here and show you. We're going to get some of these subtotals that look like this. We have to get rid of these. So the way we do that is we know that all these subtotals here are not going to have an account or a date. So what we can do is we can sort these by this value and then all the blanks we can get rid of. So I'll show you. So I'll just select all the data here. I'm going to click on here the filters button up here then I'm gonna sort by I could use transaction type it really doesn't matter it's as long as it, it renders a blank so I'm gonna click here ascending whoops I have to scroll all the way down all the way down here all the way down all the way down and I have to get rid of any excess data under it so I'm gonna right click on this and delete because some of the columns are merged and some of the cells are merged and I'll get rid of the very last one too okay it's kind of a trick okay let's try this again so I'm gonna click on transaction type sort by ascending there we go so we're gonna see bill bill payment we're gonna see all the different transaction types and as we scroll down we're gonna see a whole group that's gonna be blank so basically all these here and I'll just scroll to the right to show you you see all these subtotals we're trying to get rid of this so we're gonna click here select this all the way down all, right, all this subtotals are garbage we, we don't we don't need this uh, Excel won't understand them when we do pivot tables so I right click and delete there we go so now we have clean data now what we can do is we can take this data here and then we can do a pivot table so for that I'm gonna select my data set I'm going to click on data pivot table okay 
it'll ask me if I want to do it on a separate sheet or the same sheet let's just do a new worksheet it's easier we'll hit OK and there we go we're ready to do a pivot table now I'm gonna just make this font bigger as well let me just uh, increase this to 200 percent make it easier okay so if you already know how to do pivot tables uh, from this point forward this would just be a review if the, you're brand new to pivot tables you want to pay close attention to some of the details so pivot tables are used to take a data set like this just a table with information and organize it in any logical way you would need to way beyond what QuickBooks uh, online can do with uh, the built-in reports so for example I'm gonna click here on name in this case let's say customer name I'm gonna put here on the row label so what this will do is we'll put all my customers and actually all my customers and vendors all together I'm gonna go to transaction type I'm gonna put this under filter now what this will do is will give me a drop down menu here where I could choose which transaction types I want to limit this report to so let's say I'm only looking at invoices so I'll uncheck select all and then I'll select invoice okay so now my pivot table is only displaying or only going to display invoice information therefore the information that you're gonna see here on the labels it's only gonna be customers pretty much there we go so these are all my customers now I want to know what I sold to these customers by product so I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna look for the item which in QuickBooks Online is called product slash service here we go so I'm gonna grab this this one here and then I'm gonna put it right under the customer name that way I'm creating two layers here under the rows so now I have my customer and the product let me just put, move this to the right I don't have any values yet because I haven't told it what I want to put in the value section now what I want to put in the value section is quantity so I want to know uh, how many units I sold per customer per, per product name uh, in this report so I'm gonna grab quantity here and then I'm gonna grab this down and put it under values there we go okay oh, I did it twice whoops okay so there we go so now this says by default count it's going to count the number of sales I don't want the number of sales I want the actual number of units added up so I'm gonna change the field type and instead of making it count I'm gonna make it uh, sum so now this will summarize uh, the, the all the quantities I'm gonna hit okay there you go and naturally because uh, they're invoices and it's inventory parts it's showing us a negative number we can do some other things that are interesting on the pivot table side to switch this to uh, to a positive number but for, for now just these are positive numbers just think all of them as one polarity there we go so now let's do let's work with some labels here column labels so I want to break this down even further but now I want to do them by date so I'm gonna create a, a matrix here so I'm gonna go up here to date let's go up here until we find date I'll grab date and I'm gonna put date on the let me grab it put a check mark here and I'm gonna put date on the label side so where my date go uh, it's probably here somewhere there you go there's my date so now I get to see my customer the units the dates and I get a a full table of what products I sold per customer per date uh, maybe the date doesn't make as much sense in there in the in the column labels let's put that up here in the filter now by doing that I can actually hit a drop down filter here and I can s choose which dates I'm interested on so let's say I'm only interested on March April and May so I'll just select those there we go now I can also use a filter the paid filter to only show either paid invoices or unpaid invoices so I'm gonna click on AR paid and I'm gonna put that here on I'm gonna put the AR paid I'm gonna put this on the filter side so I'm gonna grab this I'm sure this one up here there we go so the filter side so I'm gonna choose for example my quantity sold for paid invoices so this this will only show me paid invoices in this specific date range so these are within this date range paid invoices and these are the units that I sold per customer now to make this a little bit more meaningful I'm gonna grab paid I'm gonna put it here under 
uh, I'll just put it here under row labels right here and now I can actually break it down based on what was paid and what was unpaid so some some of these things some of these uh, pivoting uh, options that won't make sense so I'm just kinda moving this at random I'm gonna put it back here in the report filter because it actually made more sense to put it there I'm gonna grab my date item field here I'm gonna grab it here under row labels I'm gonna put it between name and product that way I get a breakdown of my customer the date that it was sold and the product so that's it. That's in a nutshell how would you do, do a pivot table from QuickBooks data.